guys, welcome to Animeized. This is the English translated version of the novel Throne of Seal. The novel differs slightly from the Chinese animation or Donghua. If you want more of these videos, please smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Enjoy and have a blessed day. The long hidden martial level number 64 Demon Hunting Squad suddenly appeared on the third floor of the Demon Hunting Squad mission tower, and they took on 16 assassination missions at once then immediately set off, leaving the holy city, heading straight for the demon race. Those were 16 assassination missions, and they were missions that only a martial level demon hunting squad could accept. With the simplest ones requiring them to hunt down 7th rank demon clan experts and seize their demon crystals. Among the missions they accepted, there were even three targeting 8th rank demon clan experts. The most formidable one was to directly kill the lowest rank snake demon Endamari among the 72 demon gods of the demon race. Despite being ranked 72nd among the demon gods, he was still a demon god with peak 8th rank strength, and moreover, once he was within the protection range of his demon god pillar, his power was equivalent to that of several 8th ranked experts. The mission to kill Andamari was the most challenging one in the entire martial level mission set. This mission was also shared by both the royal level and emperor level demon hunting squads. You see, Andamari wasn't just standing there alone waiting to be killed, he was also a demon god who commanded a large number of demon clan armies. Long Haochen and his team actually accepted such missions, it's like seeking death, you see. At peak 8th rank, their spiritual power is close to 100,000, because the Demon Hunting Squad mission tower is located within the Holy City, accepting missions and traveling back and forth requires a long journey, so it's a rule for the Demon Hunting Squad to accept multiple missions at once. However, like Long Haochen and his team, accepting 16 missions at once is unprecedented. You see, all missions have deadlines, and if they can't be completed within the time limit, their contributions will be deducted. Of course, accepting more missions at once also extends the time frame, but Long Haochen and his team took two years to complete all their missions this time. However, considering their current strength, can they really defeat the 72nd demon god, Andamari? In just two years, even Han Qian, who has great confidence in Long Haochen, finds this unbelievable. However, those kids have already left. Are we really going to chase after them? That would be like punishing these children. Thinking back to the real situation Long Haochen reported to him inside Dream Paradise. Han Qian's originally tense heart gradually relaxed. Yes, Han Qian already knows about the entire team's gains in Dream Paradise. As for how Long Hao Chen brought his comrades inside, he doesn't know. Long Hao Chen only said that it's a secret that cannot be revealed. They all have spirit furnaces, so they should be able to protect themselves. And Long Hao Chen is still young, but he's not reckless either. Let them go and explore, especially since there's someone protecting them. Yes, I need to inform him about this matter quickly. Thinking about this, Han Qian temporarily suppressed his worries, letting the Tall Knight stepped back, and he himself hurriedly left the office. At this moment, the youngsters who made the Grand Knight Commander worry were sitting comfortably in a carriage, enjoying the rare relaxation brought by the scenery along the official road. The carriage was specially designed for the Demon Hunting Squad, and Long Haochen and his team had experienced it once before. But that was only for that one time, because it was a compulsory mission. However, this time, they were already a martial-level Demon Hunting Squad, so they had the right to be assigned a carriage for their team, making their travel much more convenient. At least during the journey, they could get plenty of rest. At this moment, all seven members of the martial level number 64 demon hunting squad were not practicing, with the curtains on both sides of the carriage drawn high, and the comfortable carriage had the added effect of levitation, providing a smooth ride. Not practicing was an order given by Long Haochen. They were about to embark on a long and perilous journey, and they had just finished a long period of closed-door cultivation. So everyone needed some relaxation. This relaxation process was right before they entered the demon territory. It had been a full year since they left Dream Paradise, and each person had grown a year older. Even the youngest, Long Haochen and Chai Er, had celebrated their 16th birthdays. Compared to a year ago, the members of the martial level number 64 demon hunting squad now appeared more mature and composed, with less restlessness and more steadiness. As for their overall combat strength, even they weren't very sure. After all, they hadn't appeared on the battlefield against the demon clan for over a year. Their first destination on this journey was still Star Search City, which, they had passed through when completing the Cave of Fearful Wailing, and they still needed to enter the Demon Clan's Narek province from the southeastern fortress, before venturing deeper into Demon Clan territory. The carriage sped along the road, and ten days later, they arrived safely in Star Search City. Over the past year and more, there had been frequent battles, and human fortresses had been subjected to strong attacks by the Demon Clan one after another. Among them, the Jinnan Pass battle had been the most brutal, with the Demon Clan almost breaking through the city, if not for timely reinforcements. The consequences would have been unimaginable. 
Surprisingly, the southeastern fortress where the warrior temple was located had been the calmest, and it was unclear whether this was due to major changes in the Narek province, although there were occasional disturbances, but there had been no large-scale wars. In such a context, Star Search City, as the southeastern fortress's backyard, had a notably peaceful atmosphere. Commerce and industry had seen effective growth, and the common people lived contentedly. In truth, human ambition couldn't compare to that of the demon clan. As long as they could have a peaceful and stable life, they were easily satisfied. Long Houchen and his six comrades didn't disturb the governance and military authorities of Star Search City, but quietly checked into a moderately sized hotel and arranged for two coachmen, allowing them to rest for two days before returning to the Holy City. After all, they couldn't return in a short time for this mission, so why make others wait here? They let their comrades return to their rooms to rest, while Long Houchen took Chai Air's hand and walked out of the hotel to avoid drawing attention, both wearing hats with veils to conceal their faces. After all, it wasn't just Chai Air. With a striking appearance, they strolled along the streets of Star Search City. Long Houchen held Chai Air's hand and chuckled. I suddenly remembered the time when we first met in the Holy City. What was supposed to be the most important competition became secondary, and what I looked forward to the most was escorting you back home every day. Seeing you every day, I was already satisfied. Chai Air chuckled and said, Why do I only remember your foolish look back then? Long Houchen didn't mind and grinned. Who made me your fool? As long as you like it, I'll be as foolish as you want me to be. Chai Air's gaze softened in an instant, and she drew a bit closer to Long. Houchen, the two of them walked slowly in this warm atmosphere. As they walked along, they were familiar with the route, and they only stopped in front of a certain building, a two-story building with four large characters on it. Moonlit Night Merchant Group Entering the Demon Clan territory directly would entail great risks, as the Demon Clan's border patrols were quite vigilant. However, blending in with the Moonlit Night Merchant Group and infiltrating the Demon Clan's interior was a different story. Like the Holy Night Alliance, the Demon Clan had a strict exterior but was more relaxed inside. Once inside, they could disguise themselves as Moon Demons, and executing their mission wouldn't be too difficult. Furthermore, with Yuya's cooperation, their actions would be much smoother. About five months ago, Long Houchen and Chai Air secretly came to Star Search City once, and met with Yi who was here. They relieved her time of restriction, and agreed on the date for this operation. They entered the Yi Business Association, and immediately a clerk came up to inquire. Long Houchen handed over a token about the size of a baby's palm and asked him to find the person in charge. He and Chai Air waited in the moonlit night. Merchant Group's Hall. The business association appeared to be very busy inside, with people coming in and out continuously. This was just a front for the moonlit night merchant group, and the gathering of goods did not take place here. Nevertheless, it still seemed quite bustling. Towards Yi, Long Houchen had more trust in Yi than before, mainly because of her performance in Dream Paradise. At that time, Yi's cooperation had played a significant role, and Long Houchen also realized her importance in the team. While Long Houchen was contemplating the details of the 16 tasks they had taken on, there was suddenly a commotion outside, followed by a group of soldiers walking in from outside. These soldiers were all clad in leather armor, and the leader wore the armor of a junior officer. They all held their heads high, and it was clear they weren't here for a good reason. Where's your boss? Call him out. The leader of the soldiers demanded, gripping the hilt of his sword at his waist with one hand. His other hand was placed at his waist as he spoke. The ten soldiers he brought quickly lined up, holding their spears pointing towards the shop, blocking the entrance. As soon as the clerk saw these soldiers, one of them immediately approached. Sir, what's the matter? The clerk asked cautiously. The military officer snorted coldly. Your moonlit night merchant group is suspected of colluding with the demon clan. I'm here to take your boss back for questioning. The clerk was taken aback, clearly, he had never encountered such a situation before. Sir, we are freelance merchants protected by the Alliance, Pa. The military officer slapped him. What nonsense about freelance merchants. Let me tell you, I am a newly appointed inspector. I am responsible for inspecting this street specifically. It is said that this street belongs to your moonlit night merchant group and is the richest. Why? Is it so wealthy? Isn't it because you collude with the demon clan? As Long Houchen listened to the officer's words, he pulled Chai Air to the side, thinking it was a matter concerning the Yi Business Association. As a member of the Temple Alliance, he naturally wouldn't interfere in such matters. As long as it didn't affect Moonlit Night Merchant Group's ability to take them into the demon clan territory, it was fine. However, as he continued listening, it became apparent that something was amiss. What did the officer mean by saying that Moonlit Night Merchant Group was the wealthiest on this street? The situation was starting to take a different turn. What did he mean by accusing Moonlit Knight? Merchant group of colluding with the demon clan? Long Houchen might not understand the intricacies of official matters, but he could sense that these soldiers had come for a specific purpose. At this point, a steward from the Moonlit Knight merchant group rushed over, and when he saw the soldiers blocking the entrance, he was also taken aback. 
The clerk who had delivered the message earlier pointed to Long Houchen and Chai Er and whispered a few words in his ear. The steward first greeted Long Houchen, apologized, and then turned to the military officer with a smile. Sir, I am the steward of the Moonlit Knight Merchant Group. I don't know what brings the military officer here, wanting to block the entrance to our merchant guild. We are legitimate merchants under the protection of the executive hall. The officer sneered and said, What legitimate merchants? Aren't you doing business with the demon clan? Colluding with the demon clan, that's a grave crime. You'll come with us. While speaking, he reached out to grab the steward's shoulder. The steward's smile remained unchanged on his face, but his body swayed slightly, easily evading the grab, taking a step back and saying, Sir, please conduct yourself with dignity. If this matter escalates, it won't be beneficial for you either. I think I have a way to prove our innocence. While saying this, he reached into his pocket and took out a money pouch, handing it to the military officer. Originally, when the officer had dodged his grab, he was about to get angry, but when he saw the money pouch handed over by the steward, his icy expression softened like a thawing spring breeze. He took the money pouch, opened it, and inspected its contents. His eyes lit up with a hint of satisfaction. Consider yourselves lucky, directors. It's not easy doing business on the fringes between merchants and the demon clan. But be cautious about your safety. We're withdrawing now. As he spoke, he waved his hand, indicating that they should leave with the soldiers. Wait a moment. A clear but somewhat indifferent voice spoke up at this moment. The officer paused, turned his head in the direction of the voice, and saw one of the two individuals wearing straw hats who had been standing nearby step forward, and casually remove his straw hat. What's the matter? The officer's voice turned cold again, as he looked at Long Houchin's. Handsome and youthful appearance, he immediately assumed an authoritative demeanor. Long Houchin calmly said, All of you stay here, send someone to the executive hall. Summon either the governor of Star Search City, or the chief of military affairs. The officer's expression changed. Kid, do you have a death wish? As he spoke, he gripped the hilt of his waist sword and raised it. The sword having a sheath, he pointed it, and with the sheath, he swung it towards Long Houchin's head. A glint of light flashed in Long Houchin's eyes, and a chilling killing intent suddenly erupted from within him. You dare? He roared, and the entire yee Business association resonated with thunderous intensity. The military officer was nothing more than a minor character. How could he withstand Long Houchin's spirit-filled roar? His face turned pale, and he instantly fell to the ground. His accompanying soldiers also staggered and fell one by one. Long Houchin raised his right hand, and a golden light descended, enveloping an ordinary soldier. Then he cast a silver light into the soldier's embrace. Go, do as I just instructed, or you'll never leave this place. Just one angry shout rendered these officers and soldiers powerless, their hearts filled with fear. They dared not resist in the slightest. When the officer vaguely saw the appearance of the token, his face turned ashen, and he stammered, unable to speak. The stunned soldiers, calmed by Long Houchen's restoration spell, hastily carried the martial level demon hunting squad token that Long Houchen had given them and ran away. Long Houchen coldly addressed the other soldiers. Move aside and kneel. These people were merely frightened and knelt down, but they hadn't lost their mobility. Faced with Long Houchen's overwhelming presence, who would dare to resist, especially the military officer, who appeared like a defeated rooster, utterly unwilling to make a sound, and he was the first to kneel to the side. Even at this moment, Long Houchen's anger remained undiminished on his face, his fists clenched tightly. If those soldiers had dared to resist further just now, he might have taken direct action. Ever since Long Houchen became a knight, nearly all the enemies he faced were demons. Most of the humans he interacted with were heroic figures. Riding across battlefields, he had been a force in the midst of enemies. For what purpose? To ensure the safety and well-being of the human populace. However, seeing soldiers fighting demons on the battlefield and discovering such traitors among them, how could the kind-hearted and hatred-filled Long Houchen not be furious? He had forcibly restrained his emotions to avoid directly killing the officer. Otherwise, if he had acted, he would have surely taken the officer's life, seeing how cowardly they appeared. And thinking about the Alliance warriors who had sacrificed their lives on the battlefield, Long Houchen felt a deep pain in his heart. He truly wanted to eliminate all these trash. The demon hunting squad isn't just focused on demons. Within the Temple Alliance, they also have a special role, which is supervision. Any level of demon hunting squad has the authority to oversee any level within the Alliance. The higher the level of the demon hunting squad, the greater their supervisory role. To give a simple example, if a titled level demon hunting squad questions the Alliance's leader, it can immediately initiate impeachment proceedings. The demon hunting squad risks their lives for the Alliance, accomplishing countless feats. But they don't have direct authority over the military, yet they hold immense supervisory power, making them the most significant authority in the Alliance. As the captain of a martial level demon hunting squad, Long Houchen requested the presence of the governor or chief of military affairs of Star Search City, and he had the authority to do so. 
He could even directly question these two officials from Star Search City, and if he made a serious accusation. These two might face a thorough investigation, which could potentially ruin their careers. The steward from the Moonlit Knight Merchant Group had been standing silently since Long Houchen spoke, observing how Long Houchen handled the situation. When Long Houchen shouted loudly, he too was startled. Such a killing intent wasn't something anyone could casually emit. Only those who had truly been on the battlefield and had killed numerous enemies could release such a bloodthirsty aura. No wonder the leader had repeatedly emphasized cooperation with them. It seemed they were indeed extraordinary individuals. Long Houchen turned to the steward and said in a deep voice, Hello? My name is Long Houchen. Do situations like this occur frequently? The steward from the UE Business Association shook his head slightly and replied, It's actually quite rare in normal circumstances. It's likely this military officer is relatively new to his position, and his behavior doesn't represent most soldiers. Upon hearing this, Long Houchen's expression relaxed slightly. Why didn't you question him earlier? The steward smiled calmly and replied, Mr. Long, harmony is profitable. We are merchants. It's not our place to contend with officials. Long Houchen nodded silently. He understood. When it came to dealing with people, he was still just a 16-year-old boy. However, since he had encountered this situation today, he intended to see it through to the end. It could be considered a warning to the authorities in Star Search City. Soldiers were defending their homes and nation on the front lines, and if troubles arose in the rear due to such traitors, he couldn't bear it. Is Miss Yi doing well? Long Houchen asked in a low voice. The steward replied respectfully. Miss Yi is doing well, but she's not here. She left instructions before leaving, Mr. Long. Feel free to instruct us if you have any needs, we will fully cooperate. The latest merchant caravan can depart in three days, and the goods are almost ready. Long Houchen nodded and said, Very well, we'll travel with your merchant caravan and enter the territory of the demons together. The steward nodded slightly, but didn't say anything more. He appeared cautious and composed. Indeed, earning Yu Ye's trust likely meant he wasn't an ordinary person. Not much time passed, when the sound of urgent hoofbeats echoed from outside. The sound stopped at the entrance of the business association. Two middle-aged individuals hurriedly entered, one of them in robes, and the other in full armor. One appeared to be a civilian, and the other a warrior. As they entered, they immediately noticed the kneeling soldier on the side, and their expressions turned grim. The armored military officer took a step forward, and kicked the military officer to the ground. Bastard, you've brought disgrace to the face of Star Search City. These two individuals were the governor and chief of military affairs from Star Search City. It happened that, when the soldier was dispatched with the message, these two happened to be present. Upon receiving the martial-level demon hunting squad's token, these two were greatly shocked. Star Search City was a major city, and it was situated on the border, and the status of these two officials surpassed that of the governor and chief of military affairs in a small city like Hauyu. However, the demon hunting squad was an entity that even they couldn't afford to provoke. The demon hunting squad operated independently, and they had the authority to oversee local officials. Furthermore, each of them had risked their lives on the battlefield against demons. There had once been an investigation, which found that any member of the martial-level demon hunting squad had personally slain at least a thousand demons on the battlefield. It was no exaggeration to say that every demon hunter was a hero of humanity. Therefore, even high-ranking officials like them couldn't afford to be complacent, and they were fortunate to have come together. Where is he? The chief of military affairs had a hot temper, and after kicking the military officer, he shouted angrily. The military officer didn't dare to resist at all, and he pointed toward Long Houchen's direction. The magistrate and the military chancellor raised there. Heads to look at Long Houchen, both momentarily stunned. They had seen Long Houchen and Chai Er before, but Long Houchen was just too young, and he didn't seem like a member of the martial level demon hunting squad, let alone a captain. Seeing these two arrive, Long Houchen's expression darkened once again. Even though he was young, he had experienced life and death. He was also the demon hunting squad captain, usually commanding with confidence, accustomed to handling big situations. Even the demon god emperor couldn't intimidate him, let alone the two before him. I invited the two of you here. I haven't introduced myself yet. Long Houchen also knew that his appearance wasn't very convincing, and he didn't want to waste any more time here, so as he spoke, he gestured with his right hand towards the military chancellor. The military chancellor was shocked to see that, Long Houchen's right hand instantly became translucent, a radiance that only a seventh rank temple knight could possess. Seventh rank, is this person's seventh rank? He's too. Young, isn't he? No, he must be using a disguise or taking some special medication. The military chancellor and the magistrate exchanged a glance, and both quickly stepped forward. The magistrate in robe said, Greetings, esteemed demon hunter. I am Shui Mu, the magistrate of Star Search City, and this is Han Qian Yu, the military chancellor of Star Search City. Long Haochen nodded and said, Hello to both of you. I assume you are already aware of what happened here a moment ago. I hope you can handle this matter appropriately, and ensure that such incidents do not occur again in the future. 
Otherwise, I will lodge a complaint with the Alliance, requesting the removal of your positions. There was no politeness in law. Houchin's words. He directly expressed his thoughts. Magistrate Shui Mu handled it better, with only a slight change in his expression that quickly returned to normal. However, the military chancellor, Han Qian Yu, furrowed his brow. May I ask for your esteemed name, sir? I am Long Houchin, the captain of Demon Hunting Squad No. 64, at the martial level. Before saying this, he had already released the Golden Barrier, enveloping himself and these two important figures from Star Search City, isolating their voices. Regarding Long Houchin's identity, both Shui Mu and Han Qian Yu had no doubts. The light attribute and seventh rank radiant body were sufficient proof. At the very least, he couldn't be an imposter. Hello, Captain Long. Indeed, these scoundrels caused trouble in Star Search City today. We will certainly handle it once we return. However, since you are a demon hunting squad captain, you should focus on your own duties. As for how Star Search City enforces the law, we don't need your interference. As the highest military authority in Star Search City, you can't simply demand our removal. Han Qianyu's words carried a hint of anger, and Shui Mu tugged at him, trying to restrain him. But he couldn't be stopped. Long Haoqian was already frustrated, and when he heard this, his expression turned even colder as he said, As the top leadership is, so are the subordinates. The demon hunting squad has a supervisory role, and I'm sure you are aware of that. Since you don't believe your soldiers are at fault, I will report this matter to higher authorities. Chai Er, let's go. As he spoke, Long Haoqian took Chai Er's hand and walked away, completely ignoring the two highest officials of Star Search City. Humph, who does he think he is? Han Qian Yu watched Long Haoqian and Chai Er walk away, unable to contain his anger. Shui Mu smiled bitterly and said, Han, why do you have to be so stubborn? The demon hunting squad is not to be underestimated. Moreover, it's true that your subordinates were at fault this time. If you had just kept quiet for a moment, this matter would have blown over. Han Qian Yu sneered and said, I don't believe that he can do anything to me. What can he do? He's just collecting money from these business associations, isn't he? These worthless people can't even handle money properly. Let's go back. We'll ignore them. The demon hunting squad is just for supervision. They're only martial level, after all. In terms of rank, they would need to be a royal level demon hunting squad to be on equal footing with us. What are they, anyway? They think they're so great just because they kill a few demons. Long Haochen's hearing was extremely sensitive, and Han Qian Yu deliberately raised his voice, ensuring that every word of their conversation reached Long Haochen's ears. This wasn't just provocation, but it confirmed Long Haochen's earlier statement about the leadership being corrupt. Shui Mu was clearly less assertive than Han Qian Yu, and he wanted to stop him, but he knew he didn't have the authority. In his heart, he thought, Aren't you giving him a handle to use against us? However, he also knew that Han Qian Yu had some backing. After all, his father in law was the deputy hall master of the Warrior Temple. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been continuously suppressed by this military chancellor in Star Search City. Originally, Long Haochen felt a slight regret after reprimanding the other party. After all, the other party was the administrator of a city, and he had acted impulsively due to anger. Although Han Qianyu's words earlier were unpleasant, they were based on reality. He had no authority to interfere with the city's military affairs. He would report this matter to higher authorities. But he didn't intend to get involved further. However, Han Qianyu's arrogance had completely infuriated Long Haochen. Moreover, he even voiced support for soldiers accepting bribes. Chai Er could sense Long Haochen's change in mood a hint of coldness emanating from her. Should I go? Long Haochen shook his head and said, We can't take action against them, they are alliance officials. It would put us in the wrong if we did. We must follow the proper channels. Let's return for now. I have my own way of dealing with this matter. This person is stubborn and self-centered, and is no longer suitable for the position of military chancellor in this city. After saying that, he took Chai Er's hand and returned to the hotel. Early the next morning, Long Haochen sent Shima Sien on an errand, informing the members of the Yu Yi Business Association to meet up with them at the Southeastern Fortress. The group of seven departed from Star Search City first, heading straight for the Southeastern Fortress. What happened yesterday? Long Haochen did not tell his companions, he decided to handle it himself. After arriving at the Southeast Fortress, they settled in the hotel arranged by the Yu Yi Business Association, and Long Haochen went out alone. Chaier wanted to follow him, but Long Haochen stopped him. After a brief inquiry, Long Haochen found the destination of this journey, the main hall of the Warrior Temple. Please announce, Martial Level Number 64 Demon Hunting Squad Captain Long Haochen requests an audience with the Master of the Warrior Temple. Long Haochen said to the guard at the entrance of the Warrior Temple. At the same time, he handed over his Demon Hunting Squad badge. The guards who could serve at the Warrior Temple were naturally very discerning. They quickly saluted Long Haochen respectfully and took the badge to report. Don't be fooled by the fact that Long Haochen is only a Martial Level Demon Hunting Squad Captain. Being able to promote to martial level means that he and his demon hunting squad have a high chance of advancing to royal level, or even emperor level in the future. 
This is different from the treatment of commander-level demon hunting squads. The Temple Alliance has six temples, each stationed in a fortress, guarding the Temple Alliance's defense line. In the southeast, the Warrior Temple has absolute authority. Moreover, because the southeast fortress is closest to the central provinces of the demon race, demon hunting squads often visit the Warrior Temple's high-ranking members when passing through here, to exchange information, or seek assistance. Therefore, Long Haochen's request for an audience is quite normal. Whether or not the master of the warrior temple will personally meet him, it's hard to say. Long Haochen's gaze appeared calm. Today, he specifically put on his brilliant holy armor before coming here. It didn't take long, and the guard had already returned, and with him was a middle-aged man, who looked to be in his forties. This middle-aged man wore a red robe, and he had a very robust physique. He was even larger than Shima Xian, and when he saw Long Haochen, he was also surprised. Oh, you're really young! You are Marshal Level Number 64 Demon Hunting Squad Captain Long Haochen? Long Haochen nodded. Hello? I am. The middle-aged man laughed and said, You're indeed young. I am Su Zhong Liang, the Vice Hall Master of the Warrior Temple's Hall of Valor. Long Captain, please follow me. As he spoke, he made a gesture of invitation to Long Haochen. Long Haochen nodded and followed the Vice Hall Master of the Hall of Valor into the Warrior Temple. The architecture of the Warrior Temple was less elegant compared to the Priest Temple but it had a touch of simplicity and ruggedness. Walking through the entrance, there was a massive hall, with a dome reaching 30 meters high, giving a sense of vastness and grandeur. Right in front of the entrance, at the center of the warrior temple's hall, a statue stood quietly. Upon seeing it, Long Haochen couldn't help but stop in his tracks, and respectfully performed a standard knight's salute towards the statue, his right fist striking his own brilliant holy armor, producing a resounding clang of metal. Su Zhongliang couldn't help but pause, and his gaze towards Long Haochen changed immediately his favorable impression greatly increased. This statue held supreme significance for the warrior temple, symbolizing ultimate glory. The figure was dressed in knightly armor, clearly depicting a knight. Yet, Long Haochen paid his respects to this statue without hesitation. This fact undoubtedly earned the vice hall master of the Hall of Valor's favor. Furthermore, although Su Zhongliang appeared rough on the surface, his thoughts were highly meticulous. He also had a keen eye for people. He could be absolutely certain that Long Haochen's respect for this statue came from the heart. Long Haochen's respect was indeed heartfelt. Above this statue's head, there was a plaque, with large characters, 1,000 years, one sword, that's right, this is the statue of the Radiant Sword God, Knight Woundless, you could say, for hundreds of years, the most astonishingly talented individual among the six major temples has been Yi Wushan. He was even the most promising candidate to lead the Warrior Temple to become the leading temple among the six since its establishment. Unfortunately, this Radiant Sword God died too early.